So, more 3080 drama this morning, or yesterday evening, I should say. I see a video from Jay's Two Cents where he is sharing some findings from Igor's lab. So this is like third-hand information, you might say. But it's good information. You know, if you're familiar with Jay's Two Cents or Igor's lab, you know, you know it's great content and you know it's correct. But um, yeah, what's, what's happened? So I pre-ordered an RTX 3080 because I couldn't get one on the day of release. I was trying to get a Founders Edition card and they sold out instantly. I ended up later in the day being able to pre-order a gigabyte Eagle card from overclockers.co.uk. Well, I still don't have it, obviously. Um, I'm still waiting. Uh, and I'm now, well, I'm not even waiting. I've canceled my pre-order and this is what this video is about. The couple of thousand odd cards that have actually gone out to people from board partners, not the founders edition cards, are having problems. There's video, you know, sort of evidence people are sharing on Reddit and, and here, there and everywhere else of their cars crashing to desktop, um, artifacting during games, and generally being unstable. And to cut a long story short, Igor's lab has done some testing, stripped a few of these cars down and Jay's Two Cents stripped a few down, or Jay at Jay's Two Cents stripped a few down yesterday as well. And what's happened is the board partners to basically increase their profit have cheaped out on some of the capacitors that control the power delivery and that also filter out electrical noise. Electrical noise is like interference, um, if you're not sure what it is, easiest way to explain that is if you've got interference on, I don't know, a radio, you've tuned your radio in and there's a load of crackling and static. That's not the same type of interference, but that's what I mean by interference. It interferes with what should be a clean, clear signal. So the same thing is happening on these graphics cards. Using these cheap capacitors, the power delivery, um, not only is that not as clean and reliable as it should be, the, the capacitors are supposed to filter out some of that noise that then interferes with other components close to them. Now, what this means is these board partner cards, so what did I see? There was, I think the only one that they showed that hadn't cheaped out was the Azus card. Um, the one I've pre-ordered, the Gigabyte Eagle, once you got it open, lo and behold, cheap capacitors in there. Now I'll put up a picture of uh, three pictures to show you the difference as we go through this. In fact, I'll put the pictures up now. So let's have a quick look here. So the first one you're gonna see here, this is the Founders Edition card. And you can see an array of six power delivery, I'm gonna say six capacitors. The, the, the two in the middle you see that are quite obviously different to the rest. They're made up of one, two, three, four, five. So they're made up of what looks like 10 small capacitors to make the equivalent of one of the larger black capacitors that are dotted around the, the outside edge. So it's those smaller ones in the middle that are the expensive capacitors. They're the ones that the board partners have been cheaping out on and not using. So that's the Founders Edition card. If we then look at the, sorry, it wasn't the Azus card that was good, it was the EVGA card. If we now look at the EVGA card, you can see they've got five of these black cheaper capacitors, but they have one bank or array of the smaller, more expensive capacitors. And that should be enough from what Igor's lab and what Jay say. Having at least one bank is enough. And this is a good example of where the Founders Edition card uses better quality components and better binned parts. You know, you can literally physically see it here. So, um, yeah, so this EVGA one, that's okay. There shouldn't really be any problems with that. The ones that have problems, if we go to the next picture, um, are this here. You can see there's an array of what looks like just six big capacitors. Uh, they're obviously not. They must be like the equivalent to those 10 small ones, but in one chip, I'm guessing. I'm not an electronics expert. But you can quite plainly see the array of smaller more expensive capacitors just isn't there. There's not even one array of them. You know, the Founders Edition had two. So this is what we're seeing. This is the Gigabyte Eagle card we're looking at here, the one that I'd actually got on pre-order. So why is this a bad thing? Why, why are we even talking about this? What it equates to, what it, what it really means for us as gamers, is that whilst these cards with the cheaper capacitors will still hold 
their target base clock of say 1750 megahertz or whatever it might be, they vary from card to card. There's no problem with that, but it's the boost clock. Now, we're all buying these cards because we want the best performance we can get. So if your card can't boost up to what another card can, so let's say it boosts from 1750 to 1950, 200 megahertz boost. The founder's edition card will do it all day long, there's no problem. You buy the Gigabyte Eagle, yours boosts up to that and it keeps crashing to desktop or it starts artifacting or whatever other errors you might get. That's no good, you know, because you've either got to have to manually using some aftermarket software um, like uh, Afterburner, go in and underclock the card so that it doesn't reach those higher clock speeds and doesn't crash or what I think is more likely to happen because this is really an issue the board partners are going to have to sort out. Um, they're going to have to release BIOS updates for our cards that are going to lower the clocks, lower that, that boost target to make the cards stable. Because obviously lots of people out there, we've only a couple of thousand cards out there um, and there's already lots of reports of this, it's obviously a big deal. They can't just ignore it. Um, and recalling all the cards and reworking and remaking and changing those capacitors, that's never ever going to happen. So what they're going to do, I'm sure of it, is just release a BIOS update that's going to reduce those clock speeds. Now, here's the problem. Lower clock speeds, lower performance. Why would any of us want to pay for one of these board partner cards? And, this, and the price of the board partner cards are usually more than the Founders Edition, which is the better card. The Founders Edition here in the UK, £649. My Eagle I had on pre-order is currently at 720 on overclockers. So that's £70 more for a card that's going to perform worse. You know, and some of the board partner cards are over 800 quid and they're still cheaping out on these capacitors. So, you know, they're really, they're not doing themselves any favours and they're really not doing us as buyers any favours at all. They want us to pay more money for an inferior card. So it just doesn't make any sense. But this is why, you know, the, the title of the video is I've cancelled my pre-order should you cancel yours or something along those lines, I haven't actually written the title yet, it be something like that, because that's a real question we need to answer. You know, I have cancelled mine because I don't want to pay more money for less performance. So I'm going to wait for the Founders Edition to restock. And also by this point in time, Big Navi may well be out or at least perhaps some benchmarks for us to see how that compares. So it may even be that I don't now go NVIDIA, I may end up going AMD. The reason I needed a 3080 is because I've got a Reverb G2 coming. That's now been put back until beginning of November. So I've now got this breathing space. I know a few of you in my sim community have also pre-ordered the G2. We've now got breathing space where we don't need to hurriedly grab the first 3080 we can to get the most out of our G2s because by the time our G2s land with us, Big Navi may well be out, you know, mid-November, um, or hopefully there'll be some stock of the Founders Edition cards um, with the proper capacitors, and we can buy those instead. So my advice and what I'm doing, or I've done, cancel your pre-order. Uh, if, you, if you pre-order an EVGA card and you still want to wait for it, at least the ones that Igor and Jay have showed us are good, so you might be all right. But I mean, who knows, unless you, unless you undo them all, and you know, take them all apart, you're never really gonna know. But that's my strategy, and that's my advice. Either, you know, if you've got an EVGA, maybe stick with it. If you haven't, and you've got one of the others they show that have got the cheaper capacitors, I'd cancel that pre-order, because we don't wanna be a couple of hundred megahertz down. Now, I mean, it might not be a couple of hundred megahertz. They might only have to drop the clocks 50 megahertz to make them stable, but ultimately, we're paying more for these cards than the Founders Edition, and we're gonna be getting less, which just isn't, there's no need for that, is there really? Um, we've got breathing space now, so you know, for those of us that can wait, I would wait for either a restock or, um, or to see what Big Navi comes out with. But yes, a little bit of drama there on top of the fact that we couldn't get hold of them in the first place. I mean, in some ways, that is now a blessing. The fact that I couldn't buy one of these and have it delivered has enabled me to cancel the pre-order. Now I was trying to get a Founders Edition card, um, which I had no hope of, but I would have bought one of these board partner cards had uh, you know someone like Overclockers had them in stock. So I'm glad that the scalpers out there, and this is another funny thing, the scalpers out there that have robbed us of all these cards, if they've got board partner cards, 
with cheap capacitors in, no one's going to want to buy them. So they've, the scalpers have really shot themselves in the foot here by, by doing what they do best, which is pissing other people off by robbing us all of our cards. And now they're going to have trouble getting shot of them because no one's going to pay even the, the full retail for a card that's now going to be slower than a Founders Edition card that's cheaper in the first place. So what, what a strange time to be, to be in. But anyway, I thought I'd just share this with everyone. Um, as always, have a nice weekend and take it easy.